In this video, I'm going to talk about matrix, matrix diagonalization. So first of all, what is a matrix diagonalization? So the idea of the matrix diagonalization is try to write matrix A into a simple form. Typically, what I mean by that, you can write this matrix as, if I give a matrix, it's which is square one. So I want to write this one in a form such as uh, P times lambda times P inverse, for example. So this P is invertible, of course, those are the same. And this one is very special form. It's diagonal, for example. You don't have a lambda 1, lambda 2, so on, lambda n. So all those entries are 0. So this is called matrix diagonalization. So this is important because the matrix diagonalization can be used, for example, to solve the solution for the ordinal differential equation. Okay? And also, there are some other applications when we use the when we do the matrix diagonalization, okay? All right, so now let's talk about how do we actually um, conduct the matrix diagonal diagonalization, which means how do I write the matrix A in a form such that we can write in a way that is equal to P time lambda time P inverse, of course. And then what are those? And what are those P and lambdas, okay, for example? Okay, that's what I'm going to talk about in this lecture. Okay, so first of all, uh, we here we first assume that we have a square matrix, which is uh, n by n. Let's say this is a real matrix. Okay, n by n. Okay, which means each entry is a real number. We also assume that eigenvalues are given by lambda 1, lambda 2, until lambda n. So for simplicity, we here we assume where that all those eigenvalues are different. So we can actually do the diagonalization very easily in this case. If there are some arguments that are equal, uh, we may not be writing in a diagonal form, which is called a more general, general form called Jordan form, which we don't call, we won't talk about over here. So if some of them are equal to lambda j, we might have a Jordan form. It's not a diagonalization, but a Jordan form. So okay, so it's a more general one, but it's more complicated, so I won't talk about it over here. Also, we assume that each eigenvalue has associated eigenvector, which are given by x1, x2, and xn. So each one has is a corresponding eigenvector. So we know that. So in other words, we have a times x1 equal to lambda 1, x1. <coughs> a x2 equal to lambda 2, x2. And a like, xn times lambda and xn. That's what we mean by eigenvalue, eigenvector. Okay? All right, if we have this, so if we have this kind of relationship because the eigen, eigenvalue, eigenvector, we can sort of create a form, which is AX1, AX2, AXN. So what we do is, okay, we put this one as a column. Okay, right, okay, each column, because this is a column, back, this is a vector, column vector. Each one is a column vector. If we put them together, this will give us an N by N matrix because each one is a N by one column vector. And we put n together, we have this. Because this one is equal to this one, right? So we just we can put it right hand side of this. Okay, now this hand, this one we can write simply write this as a times x1, a x2, this is equivalent. Okay. So this is sort of as if I do a times this is x1, x2, xn, is the same as you do individual to the product. Okay, that's why that's equivalent. <clears throat> the right hand side is a little bit different. The reason is I can do x1, x2, this right hand side can be written as x1, x2, xn time a uh, diagonal matrix, which is lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n, and all the entries being 0. Why that's the case? Okay, if you write this one as, assume that x1 is given by a column vector, assume that x1 is given by a column, which is x1, 1, x1, 2, x1, this is x1, okay, and this is x2 column, xn at column. If you do the multiplication, what we have here is, if you do the multiplication of this one, you have lambda 1, x1. The second, uh, the first the column, the second row is just this this row times this column, so we have lambda 1 times x1, 2, until x1, lambda 1 times x1, n. So if you write this one, you have lambda 1, x1, because this is a vector, you, this lambda 1 is a common factor. We have lambda 1, x1, if you do the same thing, the second row here will be just lambda 2, uh, x1, 1, and 
lambda 2, x 1, 2, so on and so forth. You do have lambda 2, x 2, so on and so forth. This is be the same as the previous one I have over here. So pay attention to the differences. So this one is A times itself. This is the reverse order. Is this guy time on the right hand side. So in other words, I can have here <clears throat> A times this guy. I have here. So there's one more step. I have A equal to A times x1, x2, xn equal to x1, x2, xn time lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. If I write over here, if I multiply, if this one given by x, this is the n by n matrix, this is given by, this is also the same one x, right? If I multiply both sides by x inverse, of course on the right hand side, of course time this is x inverse. So I do have is a, so this x time inverse is identity. So this become identity. Okay, identity, which means time a is still a. And which equal a equal to x times this diagonal, which is time this guy inverse, which means I have a equal to x lambda x inverse. So the lambda is given by just the, the <clears throat> is a diagonal matrix, and each entry on the diagonal matrix is given by the eigenvalues. So lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. Also pay attention to the sequence. So if lambda 1 appears here, you actually should have x1 over here, otherwise that product wouldn't be equal. And similarly, lambda 2 here, you must have the column, the eigenvectors here. If you swap these two, you sort of swap lambda 2 as lambda 1 or lambda 1 as lambda 2, you must swap these two. That's the same, That's you should pay attention to that. Okay? So this is called matrix diagonalization, which means I can write a matrix A as x times lambda times x inverse. So here, lambda is equal to lambda 1, lambda 2, and then lambda n. These are all zeros. So these are the eigens of A. And also I have x is the associate eigenvector. x1, x2, xn. So this is, I mean by associate eigenvector, uh, eigenvector for the eigenvalues on the diagonal entry. Then you have this form. Or equivalently, of course, I can also write this one in this form, which means x inverse times a times x equal to lambda. The reason being that because I can multiply, multiply both sides by x inverse, okay, on the left hand side, and I also multiply both sides by x on the right hand side, so I will get this form. So that's their equivalent, okay. Alright, so next we give examples showing how we actually <clears throat> do the matrix diagonalization, okay. For example, if I get matrix A, which is negative 1, negative 2, 1, and negative 4. So my goal is I want to write this matrix A as x lambda x inverse. If you remember what I said over here, so the key idea is I have to compute the eigenvalues, the eigenvector, and put it in the right form, lambda. Okay? Alright, so let's compute the eigenvalue, eigenvalue as the first step, because we need to have those values. So eigenvalue, eigenvalue eigenvector. Those ones computed by the characteristic equation, which is the determinant of a minus lambda i to be to zero. And I won't talk about detail about the computation. What we mean, we replace a by the actual values over here and try to compute the determinant. Since this is two by two, so it's just a, the product of the, of the diagonal entries minus the product of the off diagonal entries. So after we do the <coughs> simplification a little bit, we actually can compute the eigenvalues, which are given by lambda 1 is negative 2 and lambda, three. lambda 2 is negative lambda 3. So those are the eigenvalues. So we actually have those already. Now we need to compute the eigenvectors, okay? To compute the eigenvectors, what we do is for each one, okay, we just assume we have a solution x, which must satisfy probably a times x equal to lambda 1 times x, okay? All right, I will assume we have solution x1, x2, okay. Now we just to replace a by its actual uh, form, numbers, and we do the calculations, and then we find the two equations right over here is actually equivalent, 
You can escape all the intermediate steps. You can do the calculations. So this one means x1 equal to 2x2, the equivalent, which means eigenvectors are not unique. They have many eigenvectors associated with eigen, one eigenvalue. We just have to pick one eigenvector. So let's say we pick x1, x2 as 1, because x1 must be twice of x2, so we have x1 must be 2. So I have an eigenvector here is 2, 1. So if we follow the same rules, we can actually, for lambda 2 equal to negative 3, we still have to compute ax equal to lambda 2x, X, we replace a by its actual values over here. Then we can do the computation, we can set the whole thing, we can this, which means x1 equal to x2. Again, we have many of these options to select eigenvectors. So we can just select one of them. For example, a simple one, we select x1, x1, uh, x1, x1, x2, x1, because that satisfies the condition. So we have the eigenvectors for lambda 2 being negative 3 is 1 or 1. Okay, now we have these two already. We have the eigenvalues, we have an eigenvectors, we just have to build up this form. And lambda and x, big X, okay? Alright, now we can construct lambda x. So if we have lambda equal to negative 2, 0, 0, negative 3, so we can just put this one diagonal entries uh, with my eigenvalues we computed right over here. Okay, that give us the lambda. And x, as I mentioned, there must be corresponding. So if you do the negative 2 to put as a first entry, you, you must put its corresponding eigenvector as the first column for your x. So here is 2, 1. So I have the first column is 2, 1. So if the second one is negative 3, so I have 1, 1. So of course, you can also switch. If I can switch the order, say I put negative 3 as first, 0, 0, and negative 2 as the second. Now you must switch the sequence over here. You must put this column as the second column, this as first column, because you switch out of these two, okay? The last step is actually we'll try to write this lambda as x inverse ax. Or you can say I have a equal to x lambda x inverse. They are actually equivalent. Now we are done with the matrix diagonalization.